Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Today, we are discussing our intro to TikTok workshop, which will be taught by Rebecca, and I will introduce her in just a moment. Um, my name is Susan Winkler. I am our technology librarian here at the Champaign Public Library. Uh, I do want to go over a couple of housekeeping things for you. Uh, down at the bottom of your screen, you should see a couple of icons. Um, on the very far left side will be uh, controlling your volume. And then in the middle, you'll have a chat bubble that looks like a little comment bubble. Um, we do ask that if you have questions, go ahead and post them in the chat, and then I will relay them to Rebecca out loud. Um, if you would like to speak your question instead of typing it out, you can use the raise hand button, um, which is also down there next to that chat button, and then raise your hand and I'll come and unmute you, and then you can ask your question directly verbally to Rebecca. Uh, we do also have a CC button down there that is for live transcripts. If you'd like to enable live transcription, um, it'll show you the text of what we're saying down below. Uh, and then I also want to mention that we are recording today's webinar. Uh, we will put it up on our YouTube channel. And for those of you who've registered for the workshop, we will send out a follow-up email with the link to that, um, a link to a survey, free to fill out a feedback survey. Um, and then if we have any questions where we feel like we should put a little bit more um, information or some links to other resources. We'll do that also in the follow-up email. Um, and I think that's everything. The library's open. Um, feel free to come in and visit us. And uh, I will let Rebecca, um, you can go ahead. Do you want to introduce yourself too, or do you want me to yeah. introduce you for? Okay, so. <laughs> I, can, I can introduce I myself. Mean, we've been doing this long enough now that I'm like, we have kind of a, a, a pretty good flow. So uh, Rebecca is a library associate here at the Champaign Public Library, and she will be teaching today's workshop. And I will let you tell uh, folks a little bit about yourself. Okay, yeah. As Susan said, I'm a library associate here at the Champaign Public Library. So I help Susan with uh, all things technology pretty much. So we collaborate a lot with teaching and holding tech workshops. You'll probably also see me if you're in the library. I often work at the uh, reference desk. So if you're ever in and see me, go ahead and say hi. I'll say hi as well. And we'll talk about all the tech classes we have coming up. Um, so yeah, I am teaching TikTok today. It's a kind of a newer class. Um, and of course, things are changing all the time on the social media platforms. So we figured we'd like to cover that because it's kind of big in the news recently as well. So I think we can go ahead and jump right in. Susan will also post the webinars handout, which is the slides that I will be going off of for today. Um, and of course, we'll send that email, the follow up email with the webinar recording, and it will also have the handout attached as well. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. And of course, like Susan was saying, at any time, feel free to ask questions. If you'd like me to demonstrate something again, please ask because I'm more than happy to do that. That's what we're here for. So let me go ahead and share my screen here. And we should be hopefully seeing a uh, PowerPoint presentation. Yes, I do see um, intro to TikTok. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and jump right in. And let's talk about what we're going to cover today. So our agenda for today, we're going to talk about what TikTok is, what it's all about. We're going to also talk about how to sign up for a TikTok account if you don't have one already. Now, of course, you don't have to have one to attend class today. A lot of people take these classes to sort of dip their toe into the topic and just figure out what it's all about. But we'll also cover how to navigate TikTok as well, including the feeds. So there are two feeds that we're going to cover following and for you. Those are the two main feeds. And then we're going to talk about the discover page, the inbox and your profile page. We'll talk about how to create with TikTok, including the recording and editing tools, what challenges are, what duets and stitches are, as well as hashtags. So you may have heard of hashtags before in reference to certain websites such as Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. Uh, TikTok also uses hashtags and that's a pretty common thing now across a lot of different social media platforms. Then we'll also talk about settings. So maybe you wanted to change something like your privacy and safety settings. We'll talk about that as well as notification settings. Of course, there's a ton more settings that we won't cover, but um, of course, if you have questions about those, we'll get to those later. And then we'll also talk about additional resources. So just some links for additional reading in case you want to learn more about TikTok. 
But let's go ahead and jump right in. So what is TikTok? What's its deal? So basically, it's a short form video sharing app that you can download onto your smartphone or your tablet. Um, and it allows users to create and share short videos on any topic. So it offers a wide range selection of sounds and song snippets, along with the option to add text, special effects, filters, stuff like that to the videos. So if you've ever seen a TikTok, you've probably seen it and heard it because it does uh, integrate music and sounds into it. Um, and the company promotes it as a video sharing social network. So sort of similar to Instagram. Instagram is a photo sharing network. TikTok likes to call itself the video sharing social network. And of course, like I said before, you'll want to get it on your smartphone or tablet, and you can get that in the App Store if you're on Apple devices or through the Google Play Store if you're on Android devices. If you're not on either of those devices, you'll go to wherever you get your apps from. It, I should say it will not work on a desktop computer. It's made for a phone or a tablet. So if you want to access it on a computer, I think you may be able to sign up, but you probably won't be able to use it. I haven't checked recently, but um, we're going to be demonstrating it today on an Apple iPad. So um, if you have an iPad, it's going to look similar to how we are displaying it. Um, it looks slightly different on a phone just because of the size of the screen. But for the most part, all of the stuff you're going to see is going to follow over to either phone, like your iPhone or your Android phone. Um, and as I was saying before, TikTok is based around music. Um, so you may see a lot of people dancing or singing on TikTok, but many users will create a wide variety of content, content based around stuff like uh, cooking, arts, education. I've seen users tackle things like social issues, politics. There are even news-based TikToks where you can get your news. Um, internet trends, of course, memes humor, animals, travel, there's basically anything you can think of in terms of stuff on, on the internet is probably on TikTok. Um, and TikTok shows videos in short form, so anywhere from 15 seconds to three minutes long. Before I move on, does anybody have any questions? No questions so far, but again, feel free to uh, post questions in the chat or raise your hand and I can unmute you. Oh, looks like we do have a raised hand in just a sure. moment. Okay, I'll go ahead and, okay, you should have a request to unmute. And then you should be able to ask your question. Hi there. Did you have a, did you have a question? I think you should be able to talk now. Yeah, you should be able to ask it if you do. Maybe not. Okay. Okay. Well, if it if it was uh, uh, unintentional, that's okay too. Um, it's good to find where the raise hand button is, no matter no matter where you are. Um, and if you do have a question, again, feel free. Um, I'll go ahead and lower it. But if you do have a question, go ahead and raise it again, and we'll take care of it. Okay. All right. So um, there are some considerations to take in when you're using TikTok. So things to keep in mind. TikTok is not going to censor music, swearing, or language unless the video is reported by other users or censored by the creator of the TikTok. Um, so you may hear swearing in music. Um, you may hear swearing from the people that are creating the TikTok. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, of course, not every single video you see on TikTok will have those things, but as you're scrolling through, that may be something you interact with. Um, and of course, with everything on the internet, don't be so quick to believe everything you see, hear, or read. People out there can put anything on TikTok. So just keep that in mind as well. You'll also notice that you may be straying into some political territory on TikTok. So understand that you might be venturing into a bubble of politicized content or misinformation. So again, like what I was saying before, don't be so quick to believe everything that you see. Just because it's on the internet doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. 
Um, TikTok also has ads, so you will see those as you scroll through your feed. And I'll point out what those look like as well, so you can um, find out how to, how ads look different than a normal video on TikTok. There is also a restricted mode, which lets you control how the app is used, and it is similar to parental controls. And that's something that you can control in your settings. We'll cover settings later in the webinar. OK, any questions so far? No questions at the moment. But again, please feel free to put questions in the chat. Or if you'd like to see, um, once Rebecca gets started, if you'd like to see her demo something a second time or show something again, go ahead and put that in the chat. Yes. All right, so let's go ahead and just dive right in. So if you don't have a TikTok account already, you can sign up for one. Basically, first thing you'll do is you'll download the TikTok app on your device. So again, if you're on an Apple device, you'll go to the App Store. If you're on an Android device, you'll go to the Google Play Store. And then once you open the app, you'll tap on Sign Up to create that account. So let me switch over my video so that we can see what that looks like. Let's switch my video here. OK, and this switch, switch, should switch over to my iPad here. Yes. OK, cool. So this is my iPad. Um, this is an Apple device. And I have TikTok here on my iPad. And it looks kind of like a musical note. And it says TikTok right underneath. And TikTok is spelled T-I-K-T-O-K. -K. So it's a little, doesn't it dropped the C's. So keep that in mind when you're looking for it in the app store. Um, it's a pretty popular app. So I bet even if you typed in the actual T-I-C-K-T-O-C-K, -K, you probably would come up with TikTok. But that's what it looks like there. It's a musical note. Let me zoom in just a little bit because there are some colors associated with it. It kind of looks like almost a 3D icon. So you've kind of got the like blue and red color in there as well. But it's got that black square as a background. Let me zoom in just a little more. There we go. All right, so to open TikTok, of course, you're just gonna tap on the app. And then um, this is the screen that you'll come up with if you're not logged in or you do not have a TikTok account. Let me brighten this up just a little bit. Does that look okay to you, Susan? Mm -hmm. All right. So of course, if you're signing up for an account, you can do it a number of ways. You can use your phone or your email. You might or you actually, Rebecca, would you zoom in just a little bit? Yeah. Is that better? Yeah, that is better. So with TikTok, yeah, of course. With TikTok, you can use your phone or your email to sign up. Um, or you can use your Facebook, Apple, or Google credentials to log in. Um, I on my account, use my email. You can also use your phone. Um, keep in mind if it's with your connected with your Facebook, your Apple, and your Google account, you're probably going to want to know that information if you select the, those things to log in with, because I believe it bumps you out to those sites to verify that that's you. But if you do phone or email, you can do that, and then it will ask you for your birthday. So the reason it asks you for your birthday is for security and privacy reasons. I think it's in. TikTok's effort to try to protect minors. So they ask for your birthday. And it will also ask you to create a unique username and password. So that will be your login information for TikTok. Let me go back here. Now, if we already have an account and we are at this screen, at the bottom of the screen, there is a link that says already have an account, log in. So down here, this is where we want to go because we already have an account. So I'm going to go ahead and hit log in. And then let me zoom back out. So now I've got it says log in instead of sign up. So I'm going to use my phone email slash username to log in. So let me go ahead and log in here. And while she is doing that, I'll take the moment to say if you want to, if you don't want to use your real birthday, um, that's okay. Just make sure you remember what you've put in for your birthday. Um, 
I ran into this problem before where it is in a way to protect minors. So if you give yourself a, a birthday where you end up being like 13 or younger, um, the service may not allow you to create an account um, because they are trying to protect minors, um, like Rebecca was saying. Yes. All right, so we've logged in. And of course, the first video we've come up with is a cat video. Um, so your first screen you're gonna come to is your home screen. Uh, if you see on the bottom left corner here where my pen is, that's our home screen. We're going to talk about all these different buttons here at the bottom. So basically um, what is going to happen once you get logged in is you're on your home screen and that's going to be either your following or your for you feeds. So if you notice up at the top here, it says following and for you. So what are those? What are feeds? So the feeds are basically the videos that live in that um, algorithm on TikTok. So the for you feed is everything that um, TikTok is generating algorithmic, algorithmically for you. So as you use TikTok and interact with videos, it's going to cater more towards what interests you. And so you'll start seeing videos that you're more interested in as you use the app more. Um, so basically TikTok, they have um, something on their website that sort of explains how that works. Let me read that off. It says- You wanna pause the, is there a way to pause the video? I that's think going there right is. Now? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay. Just so it's not as- <laughs> Yes, so it's not okay. as jarring. Okay, so according to TikTok, it says every new interaction helps the system learn about your interests and suggest content. So the best way to curate your For You feed is to simply use and enjoy the app. Over time, your For You feed should increasingly be able to surface recommendations that are relevant to your interests. So your For You feed isn't only shaped by your engagement through the feed itself, when you decide to follow new accounts, for example, that action will help refine your recommendations too, as will exploring hashtags, sounds, effects, and trending topics. All of these ways are all of these are ways to tailor your experience and invite new categories of content onto your feed. So kind of in a nutshell, if you watch a lot of pet videos, a lot of food videos, you're going to start seeing a lot of those come up on your feed. So the longer you watch a video, for instance, you may have more of those types coming up. If you're kind of scrolling through very fast, TikTok is kind of like, oh, okay, maybe they don't like those as much and those may not show up as much on your feed. The following feed is slightly different. If I click on the following feed, that's gonna show us videos that are from the people that we follow. So you can follow different users on TikTok. We're gonna show how to do that in just a second. But the following feed is different because it's only the users that you follow. The for you feed, it could be anybody on TikTok. It's just coming up with that um, algorithmic um, feed through the for you feed. I hope that makes sense. And of course, I just, I'm just switching between those feeds by tapping on them at the top. And if I want to advance a video, all I have to do is swipe down and that will advance a video. Now, of course, you're seeing cats because, you know, we love cats here. Mm -hmm. um, but yours may look different. Of course, when you start yours, Aww. it needs to cater to um, what you like. So you may have different things on here. Maybe you like cooking and you watch a lot of cooking videos. You may have some of those coming up on your feed. So keep that in mind. Yours is definitely going to look different than somebody else's feed because it's for you. All right. So as we're navigating TikTok too, there's a lot of icons that come up here, up on the right side and on the bottom here. So we're going to talk about all of these ones here on the bottom in just a minute, but I want to talk about these icons that are here on the For You feed and on the following feed. So to your right here, there's a couple of icons. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see those better. Let me see if I can adjust that. Okay. Let me see if I can lower the lighting just slightly and see if I can see those better. There we go. Yeah, that's okay. better. So on the right side of your feed, you're gonna have some buttons here. So the first button here is the 
TikTok user profile icon of whoever's video you're currently watching. So it has a plus there as well. So that plus will actually let me follow the user. If I'm interested in following them, I could tap on that plus icon. So now I'm following that user. So their videos will start to show up in my following feed. So that's their profile picture. As you swipe up and see more, it's gonna change because they're different users. So you'll see different profile. looks like we have a lot of cat stuff, <laughs> not surprising. <laughs> and then right below that, you're gonna see a heart. So that heart is gonna let you like the video. So maybe you like the video a lot and you wanna interact with it. You can tap on that heart and it will like it for you. Right below that is a comment bubble. So that will let you see the comments that are on the video and make comments yourself. So maybe you wanted to interact with the video and say, oh my God, that's such a cute cat. It looks like just like my cat. You could tap on this and then it will let you see all the comments. So this one's got 52 comments. And then you can either reply to somebody else's comment or near the bottom there, you can add your own comments. So these are other people that have commented on the video. And you can look and see that the creator of the video themselves has also replied to somebody's comment here. So that's the comment. So every once in a while when I watch TikTok videos, I like to see what other people are saying. So sometimes it's kind of fun to look in that comment window there. Right below that, I think when I liked this video, it changed this icon. But let me go back here. This little arrow button here is going to allow me to share the video. So if I wanted to share it with somebody on a different website, like for instance, Instagram, or maybe I wanted to um, message it to somebody or put it on Facebook, I can share in a number of different ways. I can even um, save the video if I wanted to. I could report the video if I you know, saw that there was some not so good content. I could mark it as not interested. We're gonna talk about more about not interested in a second. And there's a couple more things I could do. I could add it to my favorites. So there's quite a few things you can do by tapping on that little arrow there. But I just call it the share arrow because mostly what you're doing from here is just sharing it with somebody. You'll also see right under the arrow, there's kind of a spinning icon. It almost looks like a spinning record like this one here kind of looks like a vinyl record. Um, this is actually going to be the representation of the song that the user has applied to their video. So we can't hear it right now, but every video that we're watching on TikTok actually has music or sound associated with it. So this is just kind of indicating that that's what's happening. If I tap on it, it will show me, let me zoom out, other videos that have used the same sound. Um, so sometimes people create sounds from existing sounds, they create their own sounds, they use music like from popular artists. So you'll see a lot of different types of music on here. Sometimes TikTok trends also have a trending sound. So you may hear the same music in a lot of different videos. So keep that in mind as well. So those are the buttons that are on the right side here. Let's talk about what's down here underneath the video. Let me see if I can find a video where it's kind of darker there. Yeah, that's a little darker. Let me zoom in. Oop, wrong way. Let me uh, there you make go. it a little focus there. There you go. Okay, perfect. So there's a couple things happening off to the left here. So this first line here is the username of the person who has created this video. So the at sign and then the username. So of course, as we scroll through, you're going to see different users here and they all have that at sign in front of them. That's just indicating to you that that's the user of the TikTok video. They have created this video. And then you'll see underneath is just going to be a description of the video that that they've added. So it may um, talk about the video. Or, you know, this one's pretty short. It's just sweet and sour kittens. Um, sometimes people have a reply, so they may mark it as a reply to a certain user. We're going to talk about that a little bit more in a second. Um, sometimes people also have hashtags. So you'll see a lot of different hashtags in videos. This one has hashtag fat cat, hashtag loaf check. 
Um, and of course, those may change depending on the videos you're watching because those hashtags are going to be kind of an indicator of what the video is so that other people can find it or to participate in something like a TikTok challenge or just to get their videos seen overall on TikTok. And of course, the hashtag is that little icon there that's next to the letters. So it kind of looks like a pound sign if you've ever seen that on a phone. We call it hashtag when it's associated with a social media website like TikTok or Instagram. You've probably heard that before. And of course, the cool thing about hashtags is I could actually tap on these hashtags and it will take me to a page where I can see all of the hashtags that are marked with it. So let me actually try that here. I say kittens and coffee. <laughs> kittens and coffee. OK, That's let's the try third, that. The third hashtag there. So if I tap on it. It looks like oh, they may have left that off one? an E. Oh, I think oh, they left off they an E, wrong? so it misspelled. Oh. Let's just try. Mm, okay. Let me see if there's a more. Let's do fat cat. So we have tons of videos with the hashtag fat cat. Looks like 909.3 million views of the hashtag fat cat. But of course, you know, you could um, search other hashtags. You could search them as well, which is what we're going to talk about in a little bit. You can also add this to your favorites. So if you wanted to follow particular hashtags, you could add it to your favorites. We're going to talk about where those go when you do that. But let's let's go ahead and add that to my favorites because we want to see if that shows up when we talk about favorites later. So let's zoom back out. So every once in a while, I like to click on those hashtags and just see other videos with the same hashtags. Let me uh, zoom back in there at the bottom because there's one more thing I wanted to cover. Um, sometimes the description is a little large and you'll see a see more button here. If I click on that, that's going to show me whatever else is hiding under here. So it may be too long to show and you may see that see here button. You'll also notice here there is another um, kind of running text down here. That's also going to be the sound. Rebecca, so not do you only want to do you switch have to a different video where it's a little easier to see. Yeah, let me see if not. I have a darker. Here there we go. go. Thank you. Yeah. So this running uh, text here, that's also the sound that the TikTok user has used. I'm not quite sure why they use it twice, but I think they like to have it in the description as well. So that's why it's over here. And if I were to click on that, tap on it, it's going to have me bring out to that sound. So it looks like they've used this sound in 358 videos on TikTok. So I could go in here and see what other TikToks have the same sound. It'll make more sense when you're at home using TikTok and you hear the music and everything. All right, any questions about that screen on your feeds? No questions in chat so far. All right, I'm going to grab some water real quick. And again, feel free to also raise your hand if you'd like to ask a question out loud and we'll, we'll unmute you. Let me see if I can find a video with a blue check for somebody, because sometimes you'll notice. Here we go. Let me zoom in down here. So at the bottom here, you'll notice that this user has a blue check. It may be a little difficult to see. Let me we can see, see the can. blue circle. I'm not sure we can see the check mark in the middle of it, but here we go. So this go. one That's has there. a check. So this blue check means that the user is verified. So that means that TikTok has confirmed that it is the account that belongs to the user that it represents. So this is helpful because you know you may see celebrities on TikTok and it may be useful to know if it's actually that celebrity posting that. Um, so it's going to post like, for instance, I know Gordon Ramsay, the chef, celebrity chef, he's on TikTok and he has a blue check as well. So that's sort of an indicator to you that that's actually Gordon Ramsay that's posting that and that's not somebody that's um, pretending to be them and you know that it's authentic. Um, so it says here, TikTok's verified badge is an easy way for notable figures to let users know they're seeing authentic content. And it helps build trust among high profile accounts and their followers. So for example, like I was saying, you'll probably see celebrities, but there are also things like nonprofits and brand pages, maybe for something like Disney World that will also have those blue checks. Um, sometimes you'll also see a date. Let me see if I can see a date. I think that happens more if you're looking at 
videos in your following feed. Let me try the following feed. Here we go. Let me find one that's dark. So this one here, you'll see it has a date. So that date is when that TikTok was posted. So it looks like this is on our following feed from Versailles. That's the username for their account. All right. So as I was saying before, there are some ways that you can kind of tailor your um, feeds. So let me go back to our um, For You feed. So there is a way to, to use your gestures to control your feeds. So of course, as I was saying before, you can swipe up to um, see more videos. So you'll see the next video in line or you can swipe down to go back. So if you wanted to go back in your feed to something that you thought you may have missed, you can swipe up and down for that. If you tap in the middle, it will pause the video. Like we had it paused before because it was kind of distracting with the cat kind of jumping around everywhere. And of course I can tap again and it will start playing. If I double tap on the video, so tap, tap, that's going to like the video. So you saw over here that my heart lit up I can do that instead of tapping on the heart. Either way, that will light up that like. Um, you can also keep your finger long pressed and a couple of things will come up. So if I tap and hold, this menu will come up here. Let me you, zoom in a little thank more. Thank you. So again, I just tapped and held my finger down until this came up. And what I can do from here is I can either add the video to my favorites or I can report it or mark it as not interested. So not interested is a good way to tell TikTok, hey, I don't really like these videos coming up on my feed. I don't really want to see more of them. So you can tap not interested and TikTok will try to keep that in mind when it's showing you new videos. So now that's not a guarantee that you're not going to see that video again, or you're not going to see that type of video again. But as you do that more and more, you're going to start noticing that your feed will change and start to cater to um, your interests. If I click on more, that's going to allow me to hide videos that are posted by this user or hide videos that use the sound. So sometimes when I'm scrolling through TikTok, I know that I don't like hearing certain sounds. Maybe they've played too much or I just don't like it. I can do the long press. I can hit more and then hide videos with this sound. So that would mean that the videos that have the current sound that is used here would be hidden from my feed. So those are some gestures. Now, of course, I can swipe here. Um, if I swipe to the left, I'm gonna see the profile of the user whose video I was just watching. So this is a quick way to get to their profile and maybe you wanted to see more from Disney World um, or it looks like Disney Parks here. I can see their whole account and I can see all of the videos that they've posted. I can also follow them from here. I can see, um, let's see, it looks like I can uh, see other videos that are suggested. There's a couple of things. We're going to talk about the profile page in a little bit, but there are a couple of things I could do by just swiping left from a video. So if I go back, let me go back to a cat one here. Maybe this guinea pig one, he looks pretty cute. Maybe I wanna follow this account. So if I swipe to the left, I'm gonna to get to his account where then I could follow them. And then I'll start seeing their videos on my following feed. Let me go back here. I can also of course follow them by hitting that plus button and I don't have to go through that extra part if I don't want to. Okay, any questions so far about using gestures? No questions so far. All right, so let me go back down to the bottom of the page here. Let me find a darker page and I'm gonna zoom back down at the bottom. And again, I'm gonna talk about these pages down here. So down here, we were currently on our home page, which is where we're seeing our feeds so as we're scrolling through, we're always going to be on our home page. But there's also something called the Discover page. So that's going to take you to the TikTok search page. Um, and here you can search for specific TikTok users or videos. 
You can also browse and search for trending topics, hashtags, or other creators. We're going to talk about this one in a second. The plus page here, it's also called the record page. That's where you create videos or upload videos from your gallery on your device. So this would be the creation part of TikTok here. If you wanted to create something and post it, you would press on that plus button. The inbox page is gonna be where notifications come in and also where your direct messages are found. So if you are wanting to look at your notifications, like who's liking your videos, who's following you, things like that, you'll do the inbox page. Or if you wanted to directly message another TikTok user, we would go to the inbox page. We're gonna talk about that in a second as well. The profile page is also important because that's how you view your profile and get into your settings. So we're gonna talk about the profile page in a little bit as well. But let's go back and talk about to the discover page because that's a pretty important one. So let me zoom back out. I'd say the discover page is also a really great way to find new videos on TikTok other than just scrolling up and down on your homepage. So let's click on the discover page. And then you'll see, yours may look a little different than mine. Let me see if I can brighten this up a little bit. You'll see up at the top, there are some trending things up here that are going to scroll. You'll also see um, there are some lists here as I scroll down of hashtags. So it looks like hashtag fitness talk, hashtag black TikTok, hashtag work from home. So these are all kind of things that are trending right now um, that people may be creating videos for. So you'll see a lot of videos that you can kind of scroll through and you could click on them and it will bring you to the hashtag where you can browse more. Let me go back up to the top here because there's another important thing. There is a search bar. Let me zoom in on that search bar. Let's see. Let me see if I can focus that a little bit. Okay, can you see that? Is that all right? Yes, yep. All right. So this search bar is gonna let us do a couple things. It's gonna let us search for either um, TikTok users, we can search for subjects, videos, uh, hashtags, trends, pretty much anything that you can think of you can search for. So let's try to search for something. Does anybody have any ideas? I have a couple, but I want to see if anybody has some suggestions. You can write that in the chat. If not, I can do my own search too. I have a couple in mind that are not cats. Okay. Um, somebody <laughs> asked about family dance. Family dance. Okay, let's try that. So that is, that is a, big, a big topic on uh, TikTok, I think. Yes, definitely. You'll see a lot of dancing. So you'll see as I'm typing in, let me zoom out just a little bit, um, that things are kind of filling in for me. So here you may see stuff that is suggested for your search. Um, now, I don't have to tap on one of these if I don't want to. I could just hit enter and do that search. Or if I wanted to see one of these, I could just tap on it. So let's do family dance, and I'm going to just hit the search button. Let me zoom out just a little bit. So then you'll notice here, okay, it looks pretty much the same. So I'm just going to keep us up at the top here. So up at the top, after I've done my search, right, there's going to be a couple of tabs here up at the top that I can kind of navigate to. So the first tab is going to be the top videos. So that's going to be the top videos that are, have been liked or interacted with, or maybe it's top TikTok users. So top is kind of the most popular stuff. There's also something called TikTok users. Of course, that's just the users that will come up when you do a search. So maybe they have family dance in the name of their username or their description. Let me see if I can brighten that up a little bit. So there's a lot of different users, it looks like, that are using family dance in their name. And of course, I could go over and follow one of them if I wanted to. Or I could tap on their information and then I could see their videos if I wanted to or follow them. I also have a videos tab, and that's just going to pull up videos pretty similarly to the top videos. It's going to show more of them, though. It's not going to show just the top stuff. So this, again, is going to pull family dance videos from across TikTok so that you can kind of scroll through them and browse. 
Let me go back up top. Sounds is also another tab here. So sounds would be any sounds that have the name family dance or whatever search term you came up with. So you could actually search for maybe a song that you were looking for, maybe see if anybody else had the song that they used in their video. And if I tap on a sound, it will actually bring me to videos. It looks like this one has not been used in any videos. Let's see if we can find one. So this one says popular, so let me click on that. So this one has been used, it looks like in 125,000 at least videos on TikTok. So I guess they were right, it is pretty popular. So that's kind of useful if you were looking for a particular sound and you wanted to see who else had the videos that were using that sound. Live is also kind of another video tab. It's just gonna search live videos. So that's people who are currently live broadcasting. So you've probably seen a lot of live videos on things like Facebook or Instagram. TikTok also has live, so that's up here when we do our search. There's also hashtags here. So hashtags, of course, would be those things that you could enter into your video description so that people can search and connect to other people with that same hashtag. And I could tap on those two, and it will bring me to the family dance hashtag. And of course, I could do any other search too. The search I was going to do here was um, for a person. So let's go ahead and type in. I usually use Gordon Ramsay as a person. He's pretty uh, non-controversial in terms of what's happening on TikTok. So I'm just going to type in his name and hit search. And then it's going to come up with some stuff here at the top. So for me, the first thing that came up was users. So he's a top user. Um, and I could go ahead and I'm already following him, but I could follow him if I wanted to. I could jump right to his profile. It looks like he has a playlist here of recipes. So playlists are another thing that's kind of cool is users can actually um, kind of put their videos into one playlist if they're based around one subject. Um, so for instance, it looks like Gordon Ramsay has a recipes playlist. Um, some people may have different playlists depending on what sort of content they're creating. And of course, I can see more videos as well with Gordon Ramsay involved. Now, that's not necessarily all of the videos just by him. That's videos by other people, too, that are maybe, um, you know, some think something is funny or have put him in the description. So that's not just created by him, it's also concerning him as a subject. Does anybody have any questions about searching? Or using the discover page? Let me go back to the discover page here. No questions in chat so far. Okay. So yeah, I kind of like to use the discover page if I'm getting kind of bored on my um, following feed or my for you feed it's kind of fun to see what else uh, people are doing out there um, and just to see what other people are creating sometimes it's fun especially with recipes i actually have a couple recipes that we make pretty often at home that i found on tiktok so it's kind of fun um, i'm a really visual person so tiktok is kind of made um, just for the kind of brain i have all right Let's talk about the profile page next. We talked about a couple of profile pages before when we were on our feed, but we didn't dive too deep. So let's go ahead and go to our profile page, which is over here at the bottom right. All right, so if I click on profile, that's gonna show our profile. So our user profile on TikTok. Let me go back down here. So this is just me zooming into the top part of our profile. <clears throat> Excuse me. So up at the top here, you're going to see your profile picture. So that's a picture that you decide to use on your profile. And then right underneath is going to be your username. So the at sign and then your username, whatever that may be. Um, you'll also see who you're following, like how many people, how many people are following you and how many people have liked your profile. You'll also have the chance to edit your profile and see your favorites. So this little icon here that kind of looks like a bookmark, that's where you can see the book, uh, the videos that you have uh, favorited. 
So uh, as before, remember when we did the long press and we had the opportunity to mark as a favorite, that would go into this window here. So let me click on that actually. Looks like we have one thing as a favorite right now and it's a puppy on the beach video. Um, I'll show that favorite thing again in a second, but those are where those will go. So of course you will see videos, sounds, effects, favorite comments, questions, hashtags, and products. So you can favorite all of those things and they will end up on your favorites page from your profile page. You'll also see a description. So this is a description that we have come up with for our profile. Of course, yours will be different because you're crafting it and creating it for your own profile. If I click on edit profile, that's gonna let me change things like my username, Maybe I wanted to change my biography. Maybe I had um, my social media pages like YouTube and Instagram. I wanted to add those here. I can do that. Let me go back. So yeah, it takes some time to explore this page as well because there's a couple of things in here that you may want to customize for your own. Down here at the bottom left, you'll see three icons. So this one that kind of looks like a square with dashed lines, then a heart and then a lock. So this one here is gonna show the videos that we've posted. We don't have any videos yet, so it's not gonna show anything. Let me zoom out just slightly. But any videos that we've created would end up here if we tapped on this button. If you tap on the heart, you're gonna see the videos that you've liked. So these are the videos that we just tapped the heart or double tapped on when we were in our feed. Let me lower the brightness a little bit. It's a little bright. Oops, that's zooming. There we go. That looks a little better. And then the lock is going to be private videos. So you can actually create videos and keep them private. You don't have to post them for everybody to see. Sometimes people like to create private videos because they just want to show them to friends and family and they don't want them to be out in the public. That will be under your private video button here with that lock. There's a couple of icons up here at the top as well. Let me zoom in on those. Let's see if it'll focus. There we go. So over here on the right, you'll see a three line button. That is the menu button and that will let you get into your settings. So I'm going to show that in just a second. Then this here, which kind of looks like a calendar page with a star in it, that is your live events. So sometimes TikTok has live events that you can sign up for and watch. If you've signed up for any of those, you would click on that and then it would take you to your page where you can then go and attend the event. Let me see if I can click on that and see what it does. Yes, so here it says live events calendar and then I don't have any events that I'm registered for, but if I did, they would show up on this page. Let me go back. So that menu button again, that is going to let me here, let me zoom out a little bit. That's actually going to pull up this part down at the bottom here, where then I can get into my settings and privacy and some creator tools. I'm going to go ahead and make it a little darker. Yeah, yeah, Thank it's you. not, it's having trouble focusing as well. I think it's enough sunlight coming in from the, there we go. go. So again, I just got to that by going to my profile and hitting that menu button up at the top right. And then I could go into my settings here. We're going to talk about a little more um, settings in a little bit, but you can access that from your profile. Let me go back. And I have my account as a private account, but once you sign up for um, TikTok, it will default to being a public account. So keep that in mind. If you're starting to post things, your account will be um, able to be seen by anybody. If you don't want it seen by everybody, you can make a private account. Any questions about the profile page? No questions in chat so far. And again, if okay. you have questions and you'd like to raise your hand so you can speak the questions out loud, please just let us know by raising yes. your hand in the um, with the raise hand icon at the bottom of your screen. Yes. Let me do a search as well and show you what a profile page looks like from someone who, let's do Gordon Ramsay again, since we already had him. So if I go to his page, 
So this is what his page looks like. Let me bring the brightness down just a little bit. So his page, of course, has his profile information up here, his profile picture, his username, and then the numbers of his following, his followers, and the likes that he has on his account. You can also choose to follow him from here. We're already following him. That's why we have a little check mark here next to this person icon. Um, do you want to zoom in just a little bit, Rebecca, so we can see that a little better? Yes. Thank you. Let me brighten it up just slightly. So yes, um, if we were wanting to follow him, we could just tap on that. And then I have already followed him. So it's got a little check mark there. This little button here that kind of looks like a camera, it's almost like the Instagram um, icon. That's actually the Instagram link to his Instagram page. So if you've connected your Instagram to your TikTok, you could click on that and then it would take you to the Instagram page for that user. These are suggested accounts that we have popped up with now that we followed him. But if we scroll down, you'll see the three icons as appeared almost like on ours, but slightly different. You'll see his videos here if I click on this button. So of course we have his videos here that we could look through. We also have this, what looks like kind of a shopping bag here. Um, he doesn't have any products yet, but some uh, TikTok users will sell items on their account. Maybe they are uh, like a store and they're selling items. They could, they could do that from this screen. If I click on the heart, that's gonna show me the videos that are liked by this user. So it looks like Gordon Ramsay has his liked videos as private, so no one else can see what videos he's liking. So keep that in mind that people may be able to see the videos that you are liking as well, unless you have that private. We'll talk about that when we get to the settings. But that's what it looks like if you're looking at another person's profile. Of course, it may change depending on whose profile you're looking at, because you know people add things or take things off. Okay. Let's talk about the inbox next, next, unless anybody has questions. No questions at the moment. All right, let me go back here. We're gonna get out of our discover page. We're gonna go to our inbox here at the bottom. Let me zoom in again. So inbox here is next to our profile. It's right here. For us, we have a little two we're going to talk about what that is in a second too, but let me click on inbox. Let me zoom back out so you can see what it looks like as I open that page. So again, the inbox is where your notifications and direct messages are going. So you're going to see things um, like who has followed you, who has liked your posts, who has commented on your post who has mentioned you in a comment, stuff like that. You'll see that on your notifications. Um, so for us, our notifications will be listed here. You'll see it looks like we have a couple of notifications. Let me zoom in. Um, it looks like we just have some account notifications. So updates for our account. And then it looks like just a TikTok wide notification about um, celebrating Black culture, it looks like. And then if I click up here where it says all activity, that's going to let me filter things out. So if I had a bunch of notifications and I wanted to filter down to only who was commenting on my page, I could tap on where it says comments and it would show just the notification comments. Same thing with mentions and tags, followers, likes, and it looks like from TikTok. So we had one that was from TikTok. I could filter that as well. Up in the top right corner, you'll see what looks kind of looks like a paper airplane icon. It looks like an arrow. Um, if I click on that, that's going to let me get into my direct messages. So this would be if I wanted to um, share videos with somebody or start a private conversation with another TikTok user. I could do that from this menu by hitting the plus button. And then I could either start a new chat with some people that I was following or I could search for a user and message them. Rebecca, are you able to delete information from the activity slide? I here? believe so. Let's see. Oops. I think you can. Let me check. Huh. 
I don't know if you are. I'll have to look into that. What if you tap where it says all activity? Is there a clear? No, it doesn't look like there is. Okay. I was wondering if I long press on that, but it's not doing anything. Yeah. And it doesn't slide one way or the other too. It looks no, like, so. I was trying to slide it back and forth and nothing. So we can put that in the follow-up email. We don't currently see a way that you can clear out specific activity information. Um, there may be something in privacy and security settings though, where you can limit what's there. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll check that, that out. Up. Yeah, usually there's like an X or something nearby, but I'm not seeing one. Great question. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I should also say something to be careful with direct messaging is that even though TikTok says it's their private messaging uh, window and page, keep in mind that nothing on the internet is 100% private. Um, so when you're messaging somebody, you don't know what they're doing on their side. You don't know if they're taking a picture of the screen or they're screenshotting it. So just be careful when you're messaging somebody privately that it may not be actually private. So keep that in mind. That's just part of being out there on the internet. Same thing if you're working in Facebook or Instagram, um, it's gonna have that direct message capability, but again, it may not be 100% private. Uh, especially if you're passing forward um, back and forth confidential information, it's probably not the best format to be doing that. Okay, any questions about the inbox page? No other questions so far. All right. Okay, so we pretty much just have that last thing down here at the bottom to cover, which is the record um, and that's the plus button down here in the center bottom. So that's again going to let me create things on TikTok. So if I was interested in creating my own TikTok video, I could hit that plus button and I could get started using it. So let's go ahead and tap on that and see what happens. All right. So of course, you're just seeing the reflection of my screen here. Let me see if I can uh, make that a little darker. Let me see if that'll work. It's hard with TikTok because you have that really stark black background and then the white writing. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, I have this in the handout as well as screenshots. So hopefully that will help if this is a little hard to see. Let me clean off the screen a little bit too because I've been touching it. Okay, so there's a couple of different things on this screen that are important when you're creating a video. So um, on the right side of the screen, you're going to see some icons. So let me zoom into those icons. That's these icons here. I'm going to zoom into those. I hope you can see that okay. It's a little bit fuzzy. But these icons are going to allow me to customize some of the videos that I'm recording on TikTok. So the flip button, that's gonna let me flip the camera either to the selfie camera or to the camera that's on the back of my device. Um, some phones have both the selfie camera and the other camera on the back. So that will let me flip between those two. The speed button here, that's gonna allow me to record my video in slow motion or to speed it up. So if I wanted to do that, I could tap here and then decide what speed I wanted to do that at. So there's also an enhance button. Enhance will let you hide blemishes and smooth out your skin. So it's sort of like a filter. A filter is something that lets you change the filter of the camera. So you've probably seen this before on Instagram. If you're familiar with Instagram, that will let you kind of change some of the colors of your camera lens. So for instance, you may be able to film in black and white or with a sepia tone, something like that or different colors. Sometimes there's like a rainbow filter or like a retro filter. It will make it look different than your regular camera color. The timer button is useful because it lets you record um, using an auto countdown. So maybe you had put your phone or your device um, somewhere like propped up and you wanted to stand back and record. That way you could use the timer, sort of like a timer on your camera. 
The reply button is also useful if you're interested in creating a video reply to somebody's comment, for instance. So maybe you had a popular video and a lot of people were asking questions and you wanted to clarify some of the comments. You could hit the reply button and record a video answering the question. A lot of people do that on TikTok. That's the reply button. Uh, the flash, of course, is just going to change the flash either on or off. So if you wanted that, you could tap on that flash button. Let's move towards the bottom here because there are some buttons down here. Let me tap. I tapped on speed, so let me untap that. There we go. So down at the bottom, of course, this big red button is going to be my record button. So once I'm ready to record, I could tap that. I would first want to select what time I wanted, though. As with the beginning of the class, I said TikTok was anywhere from 15 seconds to three minutes long, right? So you can select a time between that. So I can maybe do a minute, three minutes, or 15 seconds by tapping on one of those. And that will let me record for that long. So if I did three minutes, I would have three minutes of video time on my TikTok. It will default to 15 seconds. Upload is if you wanted to upload a video or a photo from your phone or your device that you had on there already. Effects will let you change effects such as sound effects. Um, I think it also lets you add visual effects too. Let's tap on that and see what happens. Yes, it looks like they're like just more filters. Um, I am not a TikTok creator, so I don't know too much about the ins and outs of all of these, but I believe these are just um, things that will allow you to edit or make your appearance different or put a filter on. Oh, let me exit out of that. So that's effects. Let me go back here. All right. And then templates, that will let you change. Um, let me zoom back out here. I think this is just a template that you can use to kind of uh, like, for instance, this one here, um, certain trends will use certain templates. Um, this is kind of just like a pre made thing that you plug your video into and it kind of creates it to look like these templates. It's sort of hard to describe without seeing a lot on TikTok, but you'll notice a lot of templates being used by other creators. It's kind of a trendy thing that people do. It's, it's almost like a video filter, I would say. Let me go back to that plus button here. Okay, up at the top two, you'll see an add sound button. So that's where we would add the sound that we wanted to put onto our video. So if I do that, let me make that a little brighter. Then I could find a song, I could search for one or select one from this screen, and then that would be added to my TikTok video. Lots of factors go into TikTok. Of course, once I was done creating, so maybe I've recorded something um, and I'm done, then I also have some more options afterwards. So let me zoom into that up on the right hand side. So I have even more filters that I can add. I can adjust my clips. So maybe I have recorded a couple of clips that I want to kind of edit together. I could do that here. I can add voice effects, voiceover, captions, and a noise reducer. There's also some stuff down here at the bottom. There's sounds, effects. I can add text and stickers. So there's quite a bit that you can do. And you'll notice when you go across TikTok that some people are very, very good at creating um, some pretty outstanding editing. Um, I've seen a lot of visual effects on TikTok. It's pretty amazing what people can do, actually. It's a really cool uh, way to create videos. Once I was done with doing all of that, now I've gotten to the portion where I can decide um, the description of my video. Let me zoom in. So again, once I was done, I could add in maybe what my video was about here. I could add hashtags. Let me brighten that up. Um, I can add a link. So maybe I was talking about something that I wanted to link to, maybe a website. Um, I can restrict who is able to watch my video. So maybe at this point, I wanted to create my video so that it was private. 
then I could go down here and I could change who can watch my video. So if it's only me, of course, that would be a private video. If it's only friends, I could select friends and then it will show that up here. I can toggle comments on or off by tapping that button as well. Allowing duet and allowing stitch, we're going to talk more about what a duet and a stitch is in a second, but those are ways that you can kind of incorporate other videos and um, interact with the TikTok community. So you can decide if you want that here or not. We're going to talk about those in a little bit. And then there's, of course, more options down here where then I could go and either save this or I can make this a sponsored TikTok. So maybe I was working with a company that was going to pay me to create a video, then I would have it as a branded TikTok video. All right, that's a lot to cover on that. Are there any questions on how to post something or how to create a TikTok? Of course, I won't go into the whole process because that would just be a whole nother video. It would be a longer than 15 second TikTok of oh, yeah. create a TikTok. <laughs> There are videos out there that you can watch about how to create a TikTok as well. No questions in the chat so far. All right. And then, of course, once I've done all that up here, I have a couple of things down at the bottom. Let me show that. So once I was done maybe doing my description, adding my hashtags, um, I could hit the post button that would post it. I could add it to my drafts. Maybe I was wanting to work on it later. I could put it in my drafts folder and come back to it. I can also automatically share it if I have an Instagram here. I think this will also let me share it um, via my device. Like if I had it saved onto my phone and I wanted to share it out from there, I could do that. Okay, oh, cancel. Okay, so that is creating with TikTok. I know that's a pretty quick way but again, there are videos you can watch that are probably an hour long of just creating one TikTok video and they flesh out all of those um, different options that you have. All right, any questions so far? Doesn't look like we have any other questions in the chat so far. All right. So let's talk about the duets and the stitches, because those are important things that you'll see pretty often on TikTok. Let me go back to our home page here. Let me exit out of all this creating stuff and go back to our home page here. So let me see if I can find anybody that's got a stitch or a duet, and then we'll talk about what that is. If I can't find anything, I will search for something. Usually duets and stitches are pretty obvious once you see them. Here, let me just search on Gordon Ramsay's because I know for sure he does them pretty often. So let's go to his page. Here we go. All right. So he often does this thing where he will um, duet with somebody and um, kind of record his own video while he's watching another TikTok. So let me kind of explain more about what a duet is. So a duet, sort of like the musical word, D-U-E-T-S, duets allow you to build on another's video by recording your own video alongside the original as it plays. So it will look like a split screen. TikTok says that it's a creative format for interacting with others' videos, building on existing stories, and creating new and unique content in collaboration with creators across the platform. So it's kind of a, a way to share, um, to get in on the community, to share other people's videos, but react to other people's videos. It's just a way that a lot of people use maybe for, for fun. I know Gordon Ramsay uses it as a joke because, you know, if you've ever seen Gordon Ramsay, he's always roasting people for their, their um, food that's not up to par. Um, so for instance, it looks like he has one here. He also has a duet here. The reason I can tell that is because there's kind of two videos here in one. It looks like a split screen. If I tap on it, you'll see it. Let me lower the brightness here a little bit. So here is a duet that he has posted. And the reason again that I can tell it's a duet is because it's a split screen. 
So he his video here is recording on the left and he's reacting to this video here. Um, so you can tell it's a duet also by the hashtag down here. So let me zoom into the description. So the, the, the description of course has the hashtag duet so that it's telling you if you're not sure it is, it is, it's a duet. And it's also going to tell you who he's duetting with. So this is the user that is the video he's reacting to. So that is this person here. That is this user right here at the bottom. So the cool thing is too, you can click on that username and it will take you to that video that he's reacting to. So let me see if I do that, if it does that. Yes, so this looks like he has challenged Gordon. So it says, okay, Gordon, let's some, make some Vegemite fish and chips. So sometimes users will also kind of call out Gordon Ramsay and be like, please do have my video and have me featured on your uh, page for making this crazy food item so that you can react to it. So that's kind of fun. Let me go back here. So again, that's a duet. He does mostly reaction duets, but a lot of people will create duets. And um, I've seen cool ones where people actually sing, like somebody is singing and another person will do a duet and they'll kind of harmonize with them or create a new melody. It's kind of interesting to see what people can do with duets. So if I click on the hashtag duet, actually, we can see a bunch of other people's duets too. I, I've seen for the most part, um, Whenever I scroll through in uh, TikTok, I usually see duets as people reacting, but some people are really creative with, with what they can do with duets. So I recommend you kind of scroll around and as you're looking, um, check out those duets. They're kind of fun. It's a different way to interact with a video other than just commenting. You can create your own and uh, use somebody else's content in that way. And as I was saying before, when we were in the create screen, um, you can either allow your video to be made a duet or not. So that will, um, if you don't allow a duet, that means no one else can source your video for their duet. If you do allow a duet, that means that somebody, if they found your video, they could potentially make a duet with it. So keep that in mind when you're creating, someone may want to use your video as a duet. It's up to you whether you allow that or not when you create your video and post it. There's also something sort of similar to it to a duet called a stitch. So a stitch will allow users the ability to clip and integrate scenes from other users videos in their own. So it's different than a duet in that it's not side by side. It's sort of clipping the video into your own video, um, sort of as if a video was edited into yours. So let me see if I can find a stitch. Let me search hashtag stitch because um, this, the same thing with duets, it's also going to let you um, see when I'm searching, you can find literally anything on the site. So you, maybe I'll go back to Gordon Ramsay and see if he has any stitches. Um, let me see if I type in Gordon Ramsay stitch, see what that comes I up. I assume with. stitch since stitches also means like stitches you got when you injured yourself or something see a bunch of that stuff too oh yeah with, that's true the keyword as a search term here we go so this one here it looks like he has stitched a video so again a stitch is just sort of another word for he's edited someone else's video into his so you can see down at the bottom here let me zoom in a little bit it says stitch and then it's got the user who he's stitched so as you see, he's got his video as he's reacting, crying to this horrible video of a beef Wellington that somebody else has created. I'm guessing in trying to get Gordon to react to it, they probably created that video because he's pretty famous for his beef Wellington. Um, so that's Stitch and that's Duet. Of course, you'll see those as you scroll through your feed. Um, and again, you'll want to decide as you're creating videos, if you do, to allow duets or allow stitches. It's up to you, you don't have to. A lot of people don't because they wanna keep their videos more private. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind when you're doing that part of your creating process. 
any questions about duetting or stitching? No questions in chat so far. All right. So let's talk about challenges. That's a pretty popular thing on TikTok. Let's go back to our uh, discover page. So a TikTok challenge is um, where a lot of TikTok videos will make videos that are attempting to do sort of the same thing. So these things are often trending on TikTok and they can also be sponsored. Um, so you may see them as you're scrolling through. So I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head, but every once in a while you'll see the blank challenge has got people doing this and it'll be like a news story of some crazy TikTok challenge that people are doing. Wasn't like so, there one with milk crates? Was that a TikTok thing? Was there? I don't remember. I remember there was one that was pretty famous where people were getting out of their cars and they had their video so that they were like walking next to their car while their car was still going and they were like dancing out the window. It was a really weird one. <laughs> That's what I remember the most from a TikTok challenge. Yeah. Let's see if we can find one here. Um, sometimes challenges will have a particular filter that they um, have people use. Let me see if some, there was one here the other day that I saw. I don't see anything. There's a lot of trending hashtags, but I don't see any challenges. I wonder if we type in TikTok challenges. Six in one challenge. That looks like it's something. What is this first one here? Six in one challenge. So this one, I guess, is, I don't know, six pieces of advice, six mu people. It's hard to say. Sometimes you have to watch a couple of the challenges to understand what they're doing. But usually we'll say like hashtag challenge with the name of whatever challenge it is. Um, or it will have a hashtag or a description in it. There's a lot of dance challenges. Um, there was a there was a TV show that recently came out called The Marvelous Miss Maisel. It's on mm -hmm. Amazon. And they had a challenge the other day called the Maisel Challenge. And it was like a stand-up comedy challenge. And they had a mm -hmm. filter with a microphone so that you could use that in your in your um, in your TikTok video. But they don't have that up here anymore. I think it was they they often change because you know with with social media things change pretty fast so i think they moved on to the next thing but challenges of course are an easy way for a lot of TikTok users to be a part of the community and to get views um and basically connect to other people on the app so you'll probably see a lot of challenges as you're going through your feeds all right. There's also, of course, as we were talking before, hashtags. So let me go back to that discover page here. And you'll see, of course, there are some hashtags here. Looks like there's a sponsored hashtag from Toyota Corolla called the Corolla Cross Step. There's a hashtag fitness talk. Let me zoom in just a little bit so you can see that better. Um, so, of course, the hashtags are um, kind of universal now almost in in a lot of social media and again that's just another way to kind of share topics and videos and find content basically they're a good way to create community and conversation on TikTok. Um, again to add a hashtag to your video you can add it to your description by typing in the hashtag symbol and entering a phrase with no spaces so you'll see up here where it says work from home, it's all together with no spaces. That's how people search for hashtags. If you want to search for a hashtag, make sure you don't enter any spaces after your hashtag. Of course, if I were to click on that, then I could go to the other videos that are hashtag and maybe I wanted to, um, let's go back to my home feed and see if there's hashtags on something. Here we go. So this one's a puppy watching TV. Looks like there's quite a few hashtags underneath at the description at the bottom here. So you'll see hashtags very, very often on TikTok. Any questions? 
Becca, do you want to show us what, what ads look like, TikTok ads look like? Yeah, so you'll see those as you're scrolling through. Let me see if I can zoom out. I'm going to stay sort of towards the bottom of the page here because the way you're going to notice an ad is in the description area. So let me see if we can scroll and find one. Oh, okay, perfect. We found one right away. So the reason I said that we found one right away is because down here at the bottom, it says sponsored. Let me zoom in a little bit more. So right here at the bottom, you'll usually see it's um, got that sponsored button. It's a gray kind of button underneath the description. And sometimes the music is also a promotional. So it may say promoted music. Um, that's how you can tell it's an ad. And of course, you know, if it says visit store, that's also going to be the ad prompting you to go visit their website to maybe purchase something or check out like what they're trying to sell you. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, you will see them as you scroll through maybe up every couple of videos. You'll see one. Let's see if we can see another one here. They're not too prevalent, but when you see one, you'll pretty much know. Here we go. So this one's a sponsored ad here. And then this one's put out by Pantene. And of course, it's got the shop now button down here at the bottom. Okay. So, so that's what an ad looks like. It's very, very similar to what a regular TikTok looks mm -hmm. like. So it's, so it's sometimes like, hard to tell. Yeah, like a 15 second commercial, really. Yep. Like a TV commercial, but pared down a little bit. All right. Um, I also have back stretching videos on mine because <laughs> I am very into stretching. It's good for you. Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions about any of that so far? Otherwise, I will move on to settings. And of course, I can show something again, too, if you're interested. No questions so far. All right. So let's go ahead and go to settings. So remember settings we got to when we visit our profile. And then we went up here to the top right corner and clicked on this little three line square button. And then it popped up for us down here where it says settings and privacy. So let me zoom out a little bit so you can see the full page. And let me brighten that. All right, so settings, of course, are um, things where you can access privacy and security settings, um, options of how to share videos, uh, language settings, you can change into dark mode. There's a help center. There's tons of stuff on this page. I recommend uh, just going through all of these menus and seeing what they all are because there's tons of stuff um, that I can't cover today. So even as I scroll down, there's a lot in there. But you'll see up at the top, there's a privacy uh, button there. There's also security and login. So those are kind of important things if you're wanting to change, if your account is public and you wanted to change it to private, or if you wanted to change some of your security settings, maybe you had a younger user on TikTok and you were concerned of some of the security settings on there, you could change them. Let me go into the privacy and safety here. So let's click on privacy. And then of course I have my account on private so I have this toggled on, but if yours was public, it would be toggled off. Yours may look slightly different if you're on an Android. This is on an Apple device, so it, it will look like this for me. Um, you can also change things like if people are able to download your video. So let me turn this a little bit like that. So I have downloads off so no one can download my videos. I have my duet and stitch settings changed so that only I can do that. Um, there's information here if you want to change direct messaging safety settings. So that would be if you wanted to change um, who can send you messages. And then you can change uh, some comment stuff here. So maybe if you wanted to be able to control who is commenting on your video, or if you wanted to filter out offensive language, stuff like that, you could get into that from here. Again, I can't cover everything today, but I really recommend you look through these if you're concerned about any privacy or safety information. You can also get into people that you've blocked here. 
Let me go back up to the top. There's also security and login that will allow you to get security alerts. So maybe someone's trying to log into your account. You can do two-step verification. Stuff like that is in the security page. Um, of course, you can change your language. Uh, notification settings are something else I wanted to cover as well. So let's click on push notifications. So a push notification, if you have it on, those will push notifications to your phone and not just within the TikTok app. So what do I mean by that? That means if somebody, if you had push notifications on and somebody commented on your photo, so let's turn this on and we'll do, do we have it on? Okay, let's see if that worked. Profile. Oh, sorry, sorry. Go back to my settings here. Push notifications. Okay, I guess I don't have them on. Is it letting me do this? Here we go. There we go. A lot of notifications. Okay, so that means any notification that comes through from TikTok will also come through to your regular phone notifications. So for instance, let me go back to TikTok here. If someone liked my uh, video or my comments, or someone commented, or I have a new follower, those would not only be notified within the TikTok app, that would go to your overall phone notifications, like on your home screen of your phone or on your lock screen of your phone. Wherever you see your notifications, if you have them toggled on, they will come up in your notification center. So. That's what a push notification is. Now, of course, if you don't want that, you can turn them off. So let's go ahead and see what we can do here. Okay, I'm gonna have to turn them off for my regular phone settings, but that's another screen. Does anybody have any questions about notifications or push notifications? No questions in the chat so far. And okay. again, if you'd if like to ask a question out loud, feel free to raise your hand. Yeah, I, th that's pretty much all I have to cover with the ins and outs of TikTok. Unless anybody wants to see any demonstration again, I'm happy to show something again or answer a question that I didn't cover. Otherwise, I can get into the PowerPoint again. Let me switch over my video here. Actually, I can just share my screen. Let me do that. OK, so I hope you're seeing my PowerPoint. Yes, we are seeing the intro to TikTok PowerPoint. OK, let me see if I can get this showing here. Oh, man, it always does this to me. It never bops to the one that I want. Bear with me as I scroll through all of these. This is what I when I say. So this is what's included in the handout um, that you will be getting with the recording. Yes. <laughs> it does take you step by step through the different the different uh, things that we've covered in the live demo. All right, here we go. So these are additional resources I've included. Um, Wired.com has a really good um, page on how to use TikTok. Of course, it's a pretty simple article, but it's really useful. I use that when I compose this um, webinar. YouTube also has a really good video on how to use TikTok. So it will kind of do the same thing, it will walk you through how to use it. And then there's also this really good um, page from Common Sense Media that is a parent's guide to TikTok. So if your kid is using TikTok and you're concerned or you have questions, check out that parent's guide. It will answer a lot of those questions for you. And then, um, unless there are any more questions, I can bop into the other part of the stuff that's coming up. Yeah, I don't see any questions. Okay. So of course we do have book a librarian service. Uh, if you're interested in working one-on-one -on -one with a staff member to have a question answered, we are here for you. So if you wanted an in-depth 
look at Microsoft Word or Apple computers or Windows computers, something like that, you can always schedule a book a librarian by visiting our website. You can also email us, of course, if you wanted to do that or call. We schedule those over the phone as well. And then the cool thing about all of these webinars is they go up on our YouTube channel. So if you go to champagne.org slash YouTube, you'll be able to watch all of the previously recorded webinars. So those are not only the tech webinars, those include the career webinars, business webinars, um, all of our crafty adult stuff is on there. Um, we have writer's workshop webinars, a bunch of stuff. I recommend checking it out if you're interested. And it's especially useful too if you're interested in kind of retaking something. So I know we've held like pretty in-depth classes before and it's sometimes hard to take all of that in one sitting. So our YouTube channel is great because you can go on there, you can watch the video later, you can pause it, you can rewind it. So I really recommend YouTube if you're interested in kind of catching up with some of the stuff we've already held. And then we have a lot of Microsoft software coming up this month. So uh, next week and the week after we're covering Excel and then PowerPoint. So we'll have part one and part two of both of those software. And then, of course, if you have a question about TikTok or really any other tech question, I'm happy to help answer that. If you email me, my email is right up there on the screen. And you can always call me too. I have a phone at my desk here at the library. So feel free to call or email me anytime. I'm here to answer those questions for you. Um, any of the librarians are really helpful too. So if you come in and you have a tech question, but you don't see Susan or I at the desk, feel free to ask your question anyways. We're all very well versed in technology um, and we'll help get that question answered as best we can. Okay, I think that's the end of my slideshow. Let me exit, stop my share. I'll go back to your um, your video. <laughs> yes, there we go. I took All a couple right. button presses. <laughs> All right. Are there any questions here at the end for Rebecca? Anybody want to ask a question out loud or um, hopefully we covered things for you today. Of course, uh, I always like to say at the end too that uh, if you think of a question, you know, at midnight tonight or something, which sometimes happens to me, feel free to reach out, email us, um, you know, get in touch with us. We're happy to answer questions at any time. Um, I did want to mention one other thing. Uh, we do have a monthly message. It's an email message that we send out. Um, and I usually forget to promote it at the end of the webinars, but I'm remembering today. Um, and you, if you go to our website, which is champagne.org slash tech hyphen workshops, um, there on the left hand side is a place where you can sign up to get the monthly message and the monthly message is usually uh, going to include the upcoming workshops, as well as our specialty tech workshops that we have. Um, and usually uh, point you to some other resources that you might find useful. So, so I do recommend signing up for that so then you know what's what's happening each month. So yeah it's super useful. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's everything we have today. Um, if there are no other questions and or comments or anything, um, we'll go ahead and say goodbye for the day and let you all hopefully and get out and enjoy some of the nice weather we're having today. Yes. And we'll see. And uh, we'll if see you're you inside in TikTok, that's okay too. <laughs> yeah, and we'll or maybe you're outside on your porch with your with your phone oh, doing TikTok, right? Yeah, that's a good, yes. <laughs> there you go. Enjoy the weather and TikTok at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully, we'll see you again uh, next Tuesday for Microsoft Excel. All right. Bye, Bye everyone. Everybody.